I'm glad to welcome you once again to Wesley Impact Highlights. Over the holiday break, we've been looking back at some of the most popular shows from 2013. Amid Anzac Day commemorations last year, this wonderful lady, Margaret Somerville, highlighted the trauma of war and its effects on those left behind. A former mission worker with the Methodist Church, Margaret trekked some 5,000 kilometres to safety with 95 children when the Japanese bombed Australia's top end in World War II. This extraordinary chapter from our history is now the subject of an amazing documentary called Croker Island Exodus. Margaret, it's wonderful that you should be here. I don't think I've had somebody of 100 years old on the programme before. <laughs> But you're here not just because you've lived a long life, but a significant one. And, and, and the book that tells the story of uh, crossing a continent has been republished and is known by many. You were just 29. So that's really, it's hard to say this, isn't it? That's 71 years ago when you responded to a church magazine, a Methodist church magazine, that spoke about uh, something that was a temporary job. Tell us about that. Well, it wasn't a case of... Uh, of me deciding to go, the Lord called me. I was having a time of quiet uh, and in the little book that I was following, it suggested that you tr pray for missionaries. So I kneeled down at the bed and I started to pray and I said, Lord, send out more missionaries. And he distinctly said, you go. Mm. Uh, and I thought, oh, I thought I, I, I can't go and tried to forget it. But when I came to go to bed at night, there it was again. I thought, I can't go. I'm not trained in any way. Uh, and I, I knew that they only needed trained people. Uh, and I thought, I'll never learn the language. And the Lord said quite distinctly to me, aren't you willing to be a fool for me? Well, that was it. I mean, I, I thought, didn't know how I was going to get in there to, to be when I wasn't trained. And I, I knew they needed a, a sewing machine because I'd read about that in the Missionary Review uh, up there. So I went and bought a second-hand sewing machine as so my excuse to go and see the, the, the uh, mission supervisor. Uh, and when I went in, I talked with him about that. And then I said, would I be of any use? Mm. He said, well, you might be. And we talked and he gave me some papers. And then just as I was going out, I suddenly said, oh, what language do they speak? Mm. He said, oh, it's English, all English. Well, of course, I, everything would change in my life from then on. In six weeks, I was up there. And Margaret, that was the beginning of, of a, a very short 28 years, yes. so it was really a, a commitment. But like Moses and Jeremiah, so many of the, the biblical characters, you were, you were reluctant, but God used you. Now, you experienced very firsthand part of the Australian challenge in our history, because you say that the children that you worked with were shunned by both black and white communities in a sense. Well, that was a way back in the 1930s. Things have changed very much since then. Uh, but it was decided that the two uh, government homes where they were bringing the part of original children, they were all called part of original in those days, uh, where they were being brought should be closed down and that the government would ask the churches would they take over the care of these children. Uh, and the Methodists uh, took theirs to uh, Croker Island. Now, let me pick up the story from there, because on the 13th of February 1942, uh, the team received a, a message by pedal ra radio, so important in those times, to prepare for the evacuation of Croker Island. Uh, just days later, Darwin was bombed, and we, we, we know that story well. What was going through your mind at the time? Well, we knew we had to leave there, but we thought we'd be going through Darwin, of course. Now, how would we go? Couldn't go through uh, by sea. It was too dangerous. And uh, the pedal radio, we, could, we, could, we couldn't transmit and we could only hear. Uh, 
because it was broken down. Uh, and so we just had to wait till we were told. And of course, what we didn't know was that the government and the church were negotiating to get us away. But we uh, went and uh, did everything we could to. Let me pick that story up in a moment because it's the beginning of a 44 day crossing uh, of Australia in so many different ways, foot, boat, truck, so many ways there. We're going to come back to that story in a moment, but we're going to hear a song now by Robin Green. We'll be back in just a moment. I'm only human Well, I'm just a woman Help me believe In what I can be And all that I am Show me the stairway To commemorate 200 years of faith and pioneering care in Australia, Wesley Mission has released a publication documenting its work in the community. For more information on Today's People, Today's Story, you can contact us on 02 9263 or email us at impacttv at wesleymission.org.au. 
I'm sure that some of you want to know more about Robin Green and her latest CD, and her details are going to be on our website all this week. We're back with Margaret Somerville and the amazing crossing uh, of Australia with, with such a group of children. Um, what were some of the hardships that you faced on that journey? Oh, yeah. just getting from one place to another because we only had uh, the two trucks, one from, uh, from Owen Pelly, uh, the mission station we had to get to, which is 52 miles away once we were in Australia uh, and uh, the children had to be fed. We had to divide up the, the food that we had into a few days because we couldn't all get down together. There were so many punctures mm -hmm. uh, and flat tyres and uh, even when we did get to Owen Pelly there were tr problems with uh, what we were going to eat. And, and the three of you that were leading that expedition, if you like, yep. couldn't have possibly known um, that that's the kind of journey that you were on, nor in a sense that you were making some kind of real Christian history. No, <laughs> no, we didn't know that. The real question that I want to ask you is why, what kept you going? Just the very fact that we had to keep going. <laughs> uh, we knew that we were in God's care, but th there was only one thing to do, and that was just just to keep going. We didn't know what was ahead. We just knew that we, the government trucks were ahead of us, and we had to get to the government trucks. Looking back, what would you say was the one most important lesson that you learned from that experience? I guess to, to just do what had to be done trust God. We just, we just had to trust that the next thing that uh, had to be done would be done. And, and, and the good thing about it, is, as I understand this, is that you, you've managed through your life to keep contact with some of those children that were on that epic journey with you. And, yes. and, and there's a mother aspect to that too, if we're honest. They, they see you in that special role. Uh, oh, yes, yes. Uh, it's wonderful to us, who, and I'm the only one left, uh, to see how the children have grown up and le uh, led good and uh, lives and been good citizens and the, and the love that they have for the staff and the fact that they were looked after. They're very, very grateful. and. Uh, it's just been wonderful to see how they have developed, the boys and the girls. Mostly I had to do with the girls, of course. But, but uh, after, but people have told me after they've seen the film that they, they just cried mm -hmm. because they could see the, the love. And, and uh, we did, we loved the children. And they loved us too. <laughs> And having visited Darwin not too long ago and, and the work at Somerville now and the, 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 oh, yeah. the work that's there, I know that the work that you did is, is honoured in the, in the work that continues today. Um, but God has blessed you and, and I, I, I'm just thrilled that you've given us the time today uh, to reflect on um, a long history, but a very important one and part of our Australian story. Margaret, thank you for giving us the time and sharing with us, and God bless you as you move to 101. No, I don't know about that. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. It's been 200 years since the first Methodists met in Australia. To celebrate two centuries of faith and pioneering care, CEO and presenter Reverend Dr Keith Garner takes us back to where it all began. But we don't begin here at the heart of London. We begin in a town in the north of England. In this fascinating narrative, Reverend Garner chronicles the history of the life and times of the founder of Methodism, John Wesley. This fresh and thought-provoking documentary takes us on a journey throughout the United Kingdom, beginning in John Wesley's hometown of Epworth. John Wesley was born here on the 17th of June, 1703. This one-hour DVD travels on to his education years and beginnings of social justice in Oxford, to his final years in London. 
For more information on John Wesley, the man and his mission, call 02 9263 5555 or email us at impacttv at au. It's certainly true that Margaret Somerville's story is one of great determination and triumph amidst all kinds of obstacles. It's a remarkable story of Australian history. Just like her work with the Methodist Mission all those years ago, Wesley Mission works hard to help children find strength and purpose in a safe and stable environment. This next story shows how we support families on the Central Coast through our Westlake's Family Connect programme. Let's take a look together. My name is Louise and I'm the Program Coordinator for Wesley Family Services Westlakes. We actually support families with children under eight years of age and we do that in the way of family support playgroups, parenting programs, our mums and bubs groups and we also do one-on-one -on -one home visiting. Generally we're looking at around 40 families a week would access the service. I heard about Wesley Mission running at the school here through another mother. Um, we thought it was just another playgroup, but we were so surprised when we turned up to have um, extra support. When I started coming, both of us would often end up in tears. Um, and then my daughter was diagnosed with ADHD and ODD and she became quite violent. Um, and it was just somewhere I could come and let my guard down and, and be myself. As Rennie grew older, Erin started to do our parenting program. So she did our 123 Magic and our Triple P, a positive parenting program, and then a, a recent one, a reflective parenting program. Through that, we've just watched Erin grow and develop as a mum, and she's so much more confident. In the three years, we've definitely got our confidence back and, and our sense of humour, <laughs> and we have a great time now. The whole objective behind what we do here at Wesley Mission is to provide or help make connections for families in the community so that they've got somebody that they can lean on, someone they can talk to. It becomes like a real family group for them. The other mothers, um, we're really close. We all enjoy catching up. Um, we see each other outside of playgroup now. We also understand each other a lot more, which is really important because we've all heard a bit about everyone's story and what everyone's been through. And you don't normally get that in, in a normal social environment, but in the, the environment that Wesley Mission provides, you know, the safe and um, you, can, you can talk without being judged. It's, um, it's, it's really helped build some wonderful friendships. I really, really love seeing the benefit that the mums have and knowing that, you know, just providing that little bit of support, it can strengthen them, it can help them be a better parent. We also have partnerships and one that um, is a great partnership running at the moment is with TAFE. So the mums are able to enrol in a TAFE course at the playgroup and they're just building up, you know, back to work skills. So they're gaining that along the way. Without ongoing support, without the um, community supporting us, we wouldn't be able to continue to do the work that we do here. Families would miss out and they would have nowhere else to go. There is no other, other service like this out here. Without Wesley Mission and especially Louise and the support she's provided both myself and my child, um, we wouldn't be this happy, strong family unit that we are today. Yeah, life was miserable and, and you know, it's good. Life's good. Today I'm in John chapter 10, 22 through to 30. Once again in this wonderful Easter season, I'm reminded of the ministry of Jesus, which offers hope to everyone. We've heard of that heroic journey of Margaret Somerville and a crowd of children and young people in the most difficult of circumstances. I thought I'd look at one verse and examine what it has to say to us. And we're bound to think of that momentous journey. Jesus, in a winter time, is walking in the temple courts. 
He uses familiar imagery, that of the sheep and the shepherd, and we read these words. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one shall snatch them out of my hand. As Jesus approaches his death, a post-Easter truth is found in his response to what might lie ahead. Situations will and do attempt to knock us off our track. That's not just true uh, for somebody like Margaret, it's true for all of us. We know what it is, that things come along, we expect it to be going smoothly, it is, in, to all intents and purposes, and then suddenly we, we can be knocked off our track. The weak are often preyed upon, and no one is capable of snatching his sheep from him. That's the real truth uh, of, of Jesus Christ to, to all of us, that we may be confronting all kinds of challenges and obstacles and difficulties, but if we live in him, he will keep us very, very securely in him and with him. Now, that image of sheep and shepherd speaks straight in to that situation and straight out of it into our lives to help us understand his care for all people. And certainly for the disciples, for the reinstatement, for example, of Peter in John chapter 21, the image of sheep and shepherd comes alive again in the staying and sustaining power of Jesus Christ. But the only way that can happen is when in our own lives we stay close to Jesus himself. It's not merely uh, saying to ourselves, this is true about him. If he really is the shepherd, then his sheep want to follow. They want to live under and within the orbit of his care. You see, believing is more than merely a confession. It's more than a hymn, a song, a, a creedal statement. It means living so close to him that we can never, ever be knocked off our real life, which is in Jesus Christ. Now, in the Easter season, all of us know what it is to celebrate the fact that Jesus Christ is not dead. He has been raised from the dead and is the risen Lord for all time. So what does that say to us? It tells us, I think, that whatever we're facing at this point in time, we can call upon his strength, his power, his grace, his love, and we can engage with him in the everyday challenges of our lives. Nothing, no one, no person, no situation, no complicated or complex environment of life can actually snatch us out of the presence of God. It's an amazing truth, you know. It's an important one. Maybe those children and young people on that journey, uh, those that were leading them, those three very brave and wonderful um, women as they were on that journey, maybe they took heart in that kind of truth. Whatever's going to happen to us on this journey, God's with us. They talk very, very easily about doing what needs to be done. Well, that's one thing to say. It's quite another thing to do it. And we put our trust, our hope into God's care and into God's keeping. So whatever journeys we have to take in life, whatever challenges we have to face, we can be sure that the good shepherd is with us and for us. May God bless us in that truth. If you would like to know more about today's topic or for more on Keith's message, contact Keith by writing to Wesley Mission, Post Office Box A5555, Sydney South 1235 or email impacttv at wesleymission.org.au. Many thanks for joining us. Next week, we replay an interview with Aussie Gold Medal Swimming Champion Duncan Armstrong. Until then, goodbye, have a great week and God bless you. Sleep in the prayer.